and it's 2014 Swing Fling. I'm RJ Centeni. You can find me online for everything you need to know for schedule, uh, DVDs, um, and, and all cool blogs. All right, so rjcentennial.com for everything um, today. All right, so uh, first class um, for Swing Fling, um, we did 120 plus beats per minute. Um, uh, kind of an arbitrary number, but just talking about fast music for West Coast Swing Dancers. But the idea behind the technique is simplification in your lead and follow. So followers for you, the biggest is grounding and intention. Uh, leaders for yours is simplification of lead by um, removing validation through the connection. So what that means is our basic patterns were tuck, underarm pass, and basic whip. And essentially we're focusing on finishing uh, letting the follower finish the pattern um, a little bit more voluntarily, leaders pushing more of the activity and the uh, information of everything within the lead prior to her passing me or changing directions in the three and four patterns. So if I do the sugar tuck, what typically happens is going one, two, three, and four, and on four, leaders have the urge and tendency to want to govern and micromanage the follower's movement, give her more connection and follow through to give a post or some sort of uh, ending lead and then wait to kind of emphasize and lead the anchor step and create what I call like validation to make sure she did it right, make sure she's completing and finishing at the same time. But in my opinion, that's an unnecessary step. Um, by doing this and removing validation and indicating more of a directionality, uh, a projection of how far to go through energy, not through when she comes up, but how much energy I apply, um, then that actually opens up the follower's movement, allows her freedom to finish the slot more voluntarily, uh, makes her more proactive to want to finish, and then I'm going to go ahead and use that opportunity instead of waiting for and kind of me creating a codependency on that, I'm actually going to start projecting and starting the next lead as she starts to finish. So what that means is I'm going to get off her beat, I'm actually going to put the follower more core on the beat itself, um, and that that delineation of timing allows me to kind of technically expand and decongest the movement. So what we're doing in terms of dancing to faster music isn't physically dancing faster, but we're increasing our control so we can stretch it out and expand it and slow down the music kind of technically. Um, so again, we're going to go one, two, three, and four. As, as she starts to exit and she starts to finish, I'm going to start pulling the car around, if you will, is, is the correct metaphor, and I'm going to be out the door. So by the time she finishes the movement, I've already maxed out through the connection. I'm already leading the next pattern. We do that on our pass, same thing. She, as soon as she passes me, she starts to resolve and finish. And as she finishes, I start to project the next part, especially on the whip. I'm going to take out contradiction. I'm going to start projecting. She's going to follow through. Um, as she starts to pass me, I'm not going to contradict again. I'm going to go with her. On the exit, I'm going to go with her again. Um, and then as we finish, I'm going to let her ground and then continue through. So it's always going to be relating for grounding, right? It allows the follower to understand how to get her base and actually proactively help the leader. It's also going to promote her to want to come out of the dancing. And then the leader's going to have the freedom to be able to focus on not fixing the follower all the time, but actually leading uh, and being creative to introduce variables to the dance. So uh, as we do that, it, it just makes it easier to dance to faster and faster music. So it's, in the reality, it's actually core, um, core mechanics for all uh, speeds and tempos of music, but what we're doing is justifying that this technique works better, so it works all around, especially in faster music, instead of taking the route of tightening everything, engaging faster and quicker, and trying to close the gap between lead and follow. Uh, that, in my opinion, like, congests the dance more, and makes the follow more reactive and tighter. Okay, So that's our lesson for 120 beats per minute.